Hare Krishna everyone, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books here at the live studios in Radha Lane. Yes, there really is a place, Radha Lane, it's on the zip code and you can send letters and whatever. Right just down the pathway, you, there's Shishi Radhala of Nilamadava's beautiful temple and Shishi Gorni Tire there, and Giridaj Govardhana there and had temple room full of ecstatic devotees, kirtan, it's a spiritual world. Here we are. And now we're taking a journey to, towards the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the summum bonum of all knowledge. Srila Prabhupada told us, if you assimilate this book, you will get the equivalent of five PhDs. <laughs> yes, because there's so much knowledge packed into this book. Okay. So let's hear the glorification of the Bhagavatam by Srila Sanatana Goswami, who, by the way, uh, was the direct disciple of Lord Chaitanya, elder brother of Rupa Goswami. We are called Rupa Nugas because he is the leader, but Rupa Goswami considered his elder brother his leader. So Sanatana Goswami heard for two months, solid, uh, Lord Chaitanya <coughs> instructing him on all uh, aspects of uh, Vedic knowledge and uh, the Bhagavatam. So he says this about the Srimad Bhagavatam. Sarva Shastravdipi Yusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drikprada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, much mind of the precious gems of all conclusive truths. You are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kalidvan Dudita Ditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya, Prema Varshaksharaya Te, Sarvadasa Vasevyaya, Sri Krishna Namostume. I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of Prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madeka bando matsangin madmuruman mahadana manisdadagamad bhagya mad ananda namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. The sadhu sadhuta dayin. Atini chochata kada, hanamun chagada chin mam, prema rit kada yasuda. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 So, to bring Cameron our guest today, honored guest, up to speed, because we're right in the middle of uh, something. Uh, what happened was there were these sons of a great king. The king was kind of materially attached, but still he was a good ruler. And he, when they got of age, he instructed them to increase the population of the universe, because this was more towards the beginning of the universe, and it was needed to increase the population. So they went to a place uh, near the Saraswati River to do austerities before they did this, because this is what they used to do. They weren't like cats and dogs. Before they got married and had children, they would go and do austerities. Right? So while they were doing this, 
Narada Muni some comes along. Narada Muni is a great saint. Uh, the, 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 the next in line from Lord Brahma, who was the first created being, who brought the Vedas into the universe, the sound of the Vedic hymns into the universe. They were first given to his mind-born son, not through woman, but mind-born, uh, Narada Muni. So he, since that time, he's been going all over the universe and making people devotees. That's what we do. We're in his line. So, uh, when he saw that they were so qualified and they had been doing such nice austerities and they were attached to spiritual life, he started to preach to them. And he's right in the middle of doing that. Okay? And now we're hearing about how they understood the different uh, allegorical examples and things that he was doing to explain to them why they should uh, take up spiritual life, give up materialistic life. Okay, we're in the fifth chapter of the sixth canto, and we're starting from text 16. <clears throat> Narada Muni had said that there is a river flowing in both directions. The Haryasvas, that's the name of this group of sons, understood the purport of this statement. Material nature functions in two ways, by creation and disillusion. Thus the river of material nature flows both ways. A living entity who unknowingly falls in this river is submerged in its waves. And since the current is swifter near the banks of the river, he is unable to get out. What will be the benefit of performing furative activities in that river of Maya. Purport. One may be submerged in the waves of a river of Maya, but one may also get free from the waves by coming to the banks of knowledge and austerity. Near these banks, however, the waves are very strong. If one does not understand how he is being tossed by the waves, but simply engages in temporary, fruitive activities, what will benefit will he derive? In the Brahma Sanghita 544, there is this statement, Shristi stiti pralaya sadhana shaktire ka chayeva yasi bhuvanani vibharti durga The Maya Shakti, Durga, is in charge of the Shristi stiti pralaya creation and disillusion, and she acts under the direction of the Supreme Lord, Maya Jakshena Prakriti Suyate Sachara Charam. When one falls in the river of nations, he is always tossed here and there by the waves. But the same Maya can also save him when he surrenders to Krishna or becomes Krishna conscious. Krishna consciousness is knowledge and austerity. A Krishna conscious person takes knowledge from the Vedic literature and at the same time he must practice austerities. To attain freedom from material life one must take to Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, if one very busily engages in the so-called advancement of science, what benefit will he derive? If one is carried away by the waves of nature, what is the meaning of being a great scientist or philosopher? Mundane science and philosophy are also material creations. One must understand how Maya works and how one can be released from the tossing waves of the river of nations. That is one's first duty. Text 17. <clears throat> Narada Muni had said that there is a house made of 25 elements. The, Har the Haryashvas understood this analogy. <clears throat> the Supreme Lord is the reservoir of the 25 elements and as the Supreme Being, the conductor of cause and effect, he causes their manifestation. If one engages in temporary 
fruitive activities, not knowing that that Supreme Person, what benefit will he derive? Purport. Philosophers and scientists conduct scholarly research to find the original cause, but they should do so scientifically, not whimsically or through fantastic theories. The science of the original cause is explained in various Vedic literatures, Atato, Brahma Jigyasa, Janmad Yasya Yataha. The Vedanta Sutra explains that one should inquire about the Supreme Soul. Such inquiry about the Supreme is called Brahma Jigyasa. The Absolute Truth, Tattva, is explained in Srimad Bhagavatam 1 to 11. Vidanti tatva vidas tatvam yaj jnanam advayam brahmiti paramatmiti bhagavan iti shabhyate. Learned transcendentalists who know the absolute truth call this non dual substance Brahman paramatma or bhagavan. The absolute truth appears to neophytes as impersonal Brahman and to advanced mystic yogis as Paramatma, the Supersoul. But devotees who are further advanced understand the Absolute Truth as the Supreme Lord, Vishnu. This material cosmic manifestation is an expansion of the energy of Lord Krishna or Lord Vishnu. Egadesha sthitakshyanair sthitasyagnair jyotsna vistarini yata Padasya Brahmanak Shaktis Tadadam Tadadam Akilam Jagat. Whatever we see in this world is but an expansion of various energies of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is like a fire that spreads illumination for a long distance, although it is situated in one place. Vishnu Purana 122.56. The entire cosmic manifestation is an expansion of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, if one does not conduct research to find the Supreme Cause, but instead falsely engages in frivolous, temporary activities, what is the use of demanding recognition as an important scientist or philosopher? If one does not know the ultimate cause, what is the use of this scientific and philosophical research? The Purusha the original person, <clears throat> Bhagavan Vishnu, can be understood only by devotional service. <clears throat> Bhaktya, Mam, Abhijana, Ti, Yavanyas, Chasmi, Tatpataha. Only by devotional service can one understand the Supreme Person who is behind everything. One must try to understand the Supreme Person, oh, one must try to understand that the material elements are the separated <coughs> inferior energy of the Lord, <coughs> that the living entity is the Lord's spiritual energy. <coughs> Whatever we experience, <coughs> including matter in the spirit soul, <coughs> the living force, is but a combination of two energies of Lord Vishnu, the inferior energy and the superior energy. One should seriously study the facts concerning creation, maintenance, and devastation, as well as the permanent place from which one never need return, yad gatva na nivartante. Human society should study this, but instead of culturing such knowledge, people are attracted to temporary happiness and sense gratification, culminating in bottomless, topless passion. <clears throat> there is no profit <clears throat> in such activities. One must engage himself in the Krishna consciousness movement. Text 18. <clears throat> Narada Muni had spoken of a swan. That swan is explained in this verse. The Vedic literatures, Shastras, vividly describe how to understand the Supreme Lord, the source of all material and spiritual energy. Indeed, they elaborately explain these two energies. The swan, hangsa, is one who discriminates between matter and spirit. One accepts the essence of everything. The swan, hangsa, 
is one who discriminates between matter and spirit, who accepts the essence of everything, and who explains the means of bondage and the means of liberation. The words of scriptures consist of variegated vibrations. It is a foolish rascal if a foolish rascal leaves aside the study of these shastras to engage in temporary activities, what will be the result? <coughs> Purport. <clears throat> the Krishna consciousness movement <clears throat> the Krishna consciousness movement is very eager to present Vedic literature in modern languages, <clears throat> especially Western languages such as English, French, and German. The leaders of the Western world, the Americans and Europeans, have become the idols of modern civilization because the Western people are very sophisticated in temporary activities for the advancement of material civilization. Well, Hare Krishna. So nice to see you. Oh, Hare Krishna. <laughs> <coughs> Good thing. A sane man, however, <coughs> can see that all such grand activities although perhaps very important for temporary life, have nothing to do with eternal life. The entire, the entire world is imitating the materialistic civilization of the West. And therefore, the Krishna consciousness movement is very much interested in giving the Western people knowledge by translating the original Sanskrit Vedic literatures into Western languages. The word bibhikta padam refers to the path of logical discourses concerning the aim of life. If one does not discuss <clears throat> that which is important in life, one is put into darkness and must struggle for existence. What then is the benefit of his advancement in knowledge? The people of the West are seeing their students become hippies despite gorgeous arrangement for university education. The Krishna consciousness movement, however, is trying to convert misguided, drug-addicted students to the service of Krishna and engage them in the best welfare activities for human society. Shall I repeat that? Oh, no one would object? Okay. <clears throat> oh, all right. The Krishna consciousness movement, however, <clears throat> is trying to convert misguided, drug-addicted students to the servants of service of Krishna and engage them in the best welfare activities for human society. Text 19. Narada Muni had spoken of a physical object made of sharp blades and thunderbolts. The Hayashvas, Hayashvas understood this allegory as follows. Eternal time moves very sharply as if made of razors and thunderbolts. Uninter uninterrupted and fully independent, it drives the activities of the entire world. <clears throat> <clears throat> if one does not try to study the eternal element of time, what benefit can he derive from performing temporary material activities? Purport. This verse explains the words Chorya, Pavyam, Swayam, Brahmi, which especially refer to the orbit of eternal time. It is said that time and tide wait for no man. According to the moral instructions of the great politician Chanakya Pandit, Ayushak Chana Eko Pi Nalabyak Swarna Kodibihi Nachen Nirartakam Niti Ka Chahanis Tatodika. Even a moment of one's lifetime cannot be returned in exchange for millions of dollars. Therefore, one should consider how much loss one suffers if he wastes even a moment of his life for nothing. <clears throat> Living like an animal, not understanding the goal of life, one foolishly thinks that there is no eternity and that his lifespan of 50, 60, or at the most 100 years 
is everything. This is the greatest foolishness. Time is eternal. <clears throat> and in the material world, one passes through different phases of his eternal life. Time in the material world, time is eternal, and in the material world, one passes through different fa phases of his eternal life. Time is compared herein to a sharp razor. A razor is meant to shave the hair from one's face, but if, one not, ca but if not carefully handled, the razor will cause disaster. One is advised not to create a disaster by misusing his lifetime. One should be extremely careful to utilize the span of his life for spiritual realization or Krishna consciousness. Text 20. <clears throat> Narada Muni had asked how one could ignorantly defy one's own father. The Haryashvas understood the meaning of this question. One must accept the original instructions of the Shastras. According to Vedic civilization, one is offered a sacred thread as a sign of second birth. One takes his second birth by dint of having received instructions in the Shastra from a bona fide spiritual master. Therefore, Shastra, scripture, is the real father. All these Shastras instruct that one should end his material way of life. <clears throat> it does not know the purpose of the Father's orders. If one does not know the purpose of the Father's orders, the Shastras, he is ignorant. The words of a material father who endeavors to engage his son in material activities are not the real instructions of the Father. Purport <clears throat> Bhagavad Gita <clears throat> 16.7 says, Pavrittim cha nivrittim cha jana na vidurasudaha Demons who are less than human beings <clears throat> but are not called animals do not know the meaning of privriti and nivriti <clears throat> work to be done and work not to be done. In the material world every living entity has a desire to lord it over the material world as much as possible. This is called pravritti marg. All the Shastras, however, advise nivritti marg, or release from the materialistic way of life. <clears throat> Apart from the Shastras of the Vedic civilization, which is the oldest of the worlds, other Shastras agree on this point. For example, in the Buddhist Shastras, Lord Buddha advises that one achieve nirvana by giving up the materialistic way of life. <clears throat> In the Bible, which is also Shastra, one will find the same advice. One should cease materialistic life and return to the kingdom of God. In any Shastra, one may examine, especially the Vedic Shastra, the same advice is given. One should give up his materialistic life and return to his original spiritual life. Shankaracharya also propounds the same conclusion, Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya. This material world or materialistic life is simply illusion, and therefore one should stop his illusory activities and come to the platform of Brahman. The word Shastra refers to the scriptures, particularly the Vedic books of knowledge. The Vedas, Sama, Yajur, Rig, and Anatarva, and any other books deriving knowledge from these Vedas are considered Vedic literatures. Bhagavad Gita is the essence of all Vedic knowledge and therefore it is the scripture whose instruction should be especially accepted. In this, in this essence of all Shastras, Krishna personally advises that one should give up all other duties and surrender unto Him. Sarvadharman Parichaja Mamekam Sharanam Raja one should be initiated into following the principles of Shastra. In offering initiation, our Krishna consciousness movement asks one to come to the conclusion of Shastra by taking the advice of the supreme speaker of the Shastra, Krishna, forgetting the principles of the materialistic way of life. Therefore, the principles we advise are no illicit sex, no intoxication, no gambling, and no meat-eating. These four types of engagement 
will enable an intelligent person to get free from the materialistic life and return home back to Godhead. In regard to the instructions of the father and mother, it may be said that every living entity, including even the insignificant cats, dogs, and serpents, take, takes birth of the father and mother. Therefore, getting a material father and mother is not a problem <laughs> in every form of life. <laughs> birth after birth, the living entity gets a father and mother. In human society, however, if one is satisfied with his material father and mother and their instructions and does not make further progress by accepting a spiritual master and being educated in the Shastras, <clears throat> he certainly remains in darkness. The material father and mother are important only if they are interested in educating their son to be free from the clutches of death. As instructed by Rishabdev, Bhagavatam 5.5.18, Pita nasasyaj janani nasasyat namot jated yat samopetam rityum. One should not strive to become a mother or father if one cannot save one's dependent son from the impending danger of death. A parent who does not know how to save his son has no value because such fathers and mothers may, may be had in any form of life even among the cats, dogs, and so on. <clears throat> Only a father and mother who can elevate their son to the spiritual platform are bona fide parents. Therefore, according to the Vedic system, it is said, Janmana Jayate Shudra. One is born of a material father and mother as a Shudra. The purpose of life, however, is to become a Brahmana, a first-class man. <clears throat> the first class intelligent man is called a Brahmana because he knows the Supreme Brahman, the Absolute Truth. According to the Vedic instructions, Tad Vigyanartam Sagarum Ibabigachet Mundaka Upanishad 1 2 12. To know this science, <clears throat> one must approach a bona fide guru, a spiritual master, who will initiate the disciple with the sacred thread so that he may understand the Vedic knowledge. Janmana jayate shudra samskarat di bhavet dvijaha Becoming a brahmana through the endeavor of a bona fide spiritual master is called sanskara. After initiation, one is engaged in the study of the shastra, which teaches the student how to gain release from materialistic life and return home back to Godhead. The Krishna Consciousness Movement is teaching this higher knowledge of retiring from materialistic life to return to Godhead. But unfortunately, many parents are not very satisfied with this movement. Aside from the parents of our students, many businessmen are also dissatisfied because we teach our students to abandon intoxication, meat-eating, illicit sex, and gambling. <laughs> If the Krishna consciousness movement spreads, the so-called businessmen will have to close their slaughterhouses, breweries, and cigarette factories. <laughs> Therefore, they are also very much afraid. <clears throat> However, we have no alternative than to teach our students to free themselves from materialistic life. We must instruct them in the opposite of material life to save them from the repetition of birth and death. Narada Muni, therefore, advised the Haryashvas, the sons of Prajapati Daksha, that instead of begetting progeny, it would be better to leave and achieve the perfection of spiritual understanding according to the instructions of the Shastras. The importance of Shastras is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita 16.23 Yakshastra Pidemutsri Ja Vartate Kama Karataha Nasasidhim avapno di, nasukam na padam gatim. One who disregards the injunctions of the Shastras and acts whimsically as he likes never achieves the perfection of life, not to speak of happiness, nor does he return home to the spiritual world. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Who can make things clearer than that? Text 21. <clears throat> Shukadeva Goswami continued, 
<coughs> My dear king, after hearing the instructions of Narada, the Haryashwas, the sons of Prajapati Daksha, were firmly convinced. They all believed in his instructions and reached the same conclusion. Having accepted him as their spiritual master, they circumambulated that great sage and followed the path by which one never returns to this world. Purport. From this verse, we can understand the meaning of initiation and the duties of a disciple and spiritual master. The spiritual master never instructs his disciple, take a mantra from me, pay me some money, and by practicing this yoga system, you will become very expert in materialistic life. <laughs> Sound familiar? This is not the duty of the spiritual master. Rather, the spiritual master teaches the disciple how to give up materialistic life. And the disciple's duty is to assimilate his instructions and ultimately follow the path back home, back to Godhead, from whence no one returns to this material world. After hearing the instructions of Narada Muni, the Hayashvas, the sons of Prajapati Daksha, decided not to be entangled in materialistic life by begetting hundreds of children and having to take care of them. This would have been unnecessarily entangling. The, the Hayashvas did not consider pious and impious activities. Their materialistic <coughs> father had instructed them to increase the population, but because of the words of Narada Muni, they could not heed that instruction. Narada Muni, as their spiritual master, gave them the Shastric injunctions, instructions, <coughs> that they should give up this material world, and as bona fide disciples, they followed his instructions. One should not endeavor to wander to different, pla different planetary systems within this universe. For even if one goes to the topmost planetary system, Brahmaloka, one must return again. Chine, Punye, Martyalokam, Pishanti. Bhagavad Gita 9.21 The endeavors of karmis are a useless waste of time. One should endeavor, <coughs> one should endeavor to return home back to Godhead. This is the perfection of life. As the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 8.16 Abrama Bhuvanalo Ka Puna Abhartanorjuna Mam Upetya Dukonteya Puna Janma Navijate From the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest, all are places of misery wherein repeated birth and death take place. But one who attains to my abode, O son of Kunti, never takes birth again. Text twenty two. The seven mu musical notes, shari, ga, ma, pa, da, and ni, are used in musical instruments, but originally they come from the Samaveda. <coughs> the great sage Narada <coughs> vibrates sounds <coughs> describing the pastimes of the Supreme Lord. By such transcendental vibrations, such as Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. He fixes his mind at the lotus feet of the Lord. Thus he directly perceives Rishikesha, the master of the senses. After delivering the Haryashvas, Narada Muni continued traveling throughout the planetary systems, his mind always fixed at the lotus feet of the Lord. Purport. The goodness of the great sage Narada Muni is described herewith. He always chants about the pastimes of the Lord and delivers the fallen souls back to Godhead. In this regard, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has sung Narada Muni Bhajai Vina Radhika Ramana Name Nama Amani Utita Hoya Bhakata Gita Same Amiya Dhara Varishe Gana Shavana Yugli Dagiya Bhakata Jana Sangani Nache Variya Apanahaya Maruda Pura Asaba Pashi Mataya Jagata Jane Keha Vakande Keha Nache Keha Mate Mani Mane Pancha Badana Narede Dari Premara Sagana Rola Kamala Lasana 
Nachiya Bale, Bolo Bolo Hari Bolo. Sahasravana Paramasuke, Hari Hari Bali Gaya. Nama Pravave Matila Bishwa, Nama Rasa Sabi Paya. Sri Nama Sri Krishna Nama Rasa Nespuri, Purala Amara Asha. Sri Rupa Padi Yache Yache Ye Iha. Bhagavati no da dasa. The purport of this song is that Narada Muni, the great soul, plays a stringed instrument called Ivina, vibrating the sound Radhika Ramana, which is another name for Krishna. As soon as he strokes the strings, all the devotees begin responding, making a very beautiful vibration. <coughs> Accompanied by the stringed instrument, the singing seems like a shower of nectar, and all the devotees dance in ecstasy to the fullest extent of their satisfaction. While dancing, they appear madly intoxicated with ecstasy, as if drinking the beverage called Maduri Pura. Some of them cry, some of them dance, and some of them, although unable to dance publicly, dance within their hearts. <clears throat> Lord Shiva embraces Narada Muni, and begins talking in an ecstatic voice and seeing Lord Shiva dancing with Narada, Lord Brahma also joins saying, all of you kindly chant, Hari Bol, Hari Bol. Mm -hmm. The King of Heaven, Indra, also gradually joins with great satisfaction and begins <coughs> dancing and chanting, Hari Bol, Hari Bol. In this way, by the influence of the transcendental vibration of the holy name of God, the whole universe becomes ecstatic. Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, when the universe becomes ec ecstatic, my desire is satisfied. I therefore pray under the lotus feet of Rupa Goswami that this chanting of Harinama may go on nicely like this. Narada Muni ki chai. Bhakti Vinod Thakur ki chai. <coughs> Lord Brahma is the guru of Narada Muni, who is the guru of Vyasadev, and Vyasadev is the guru of Madhvacharya. Thus the Gaudiya Madhva Sampradaya is in the disciplic succession from Narada Muni. The members of this disciplic succession, in other words, <coughs> the members of the Christian consciousness movement, should follow in the footsteps of Narada Muni by chanting the transcendental vibration. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. They should go everywhere to deliver the fallen souls by vibrating the Hare Krishna mantra and the instructions of Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Chaitanya Charitamrita. That will please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One can spiritually advance if one actually follows the instructions of Narada Muni. If one pleases Narada Muni, then the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Rishikesha, is also pleased. Yasya Prasadad Bhagavat Prasada. The immediate spiritual master is the representative of Narada Muni. There is no difference between the instructions of Narada Muni and those of the present spiritual master. <clears throat> Both Narada Muni and the present spiritual master speak the same teachings of Krishna, who says in Bhagavad Gita, 1865 and 66. Man mana bhavabad bhakto mam namaskuru mami priyosime sarvadharman pritjaja mami kam sharanam braja ahang twam sarvapapebhyo mokshayishami ma shuchaha Always think of me and become my devotee. Worship me and offer your homage unto me. Thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reaction. Do not fear. We'll stop there tonight. Hare Krishna. And I have a curfew tonight at 7.45. So now we will enter the 
open mic phase of our daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books give us all an opportunity to reflect any point that was made and there were lots of beautiful points made tonight by Srila Prabhupada we would like to uh, reflect upon anything you want to discuss further or inquire about please we missed you go ahead she went to her mother's for Mother Day and now her mother's going to become a devotee based on the teachings of the Hay- to the Hayashas okay so uh, we read this earlier in the chapter <coughs> One must try to understand the material elements are the separated, inferior energy of the Lord and that the living entity is the Lord's spiritual energy. Whatever we experience, including matter and the spirit soul, the living force is but a combination of two energies of Lord Vishnu, the inferior energy and the superior energy. One should seriously study the facts concerning creation, maintenance, and devastation, as well as the permanent place from which one never need return so um the first part of all that i understood perfectly i got really excited reading that but this the second part that one should seriously study the facts concerning creation maintenance and devastation i kind of didn't understand where that came from from like the first point to the second point and i was wondering if you could explain like why that's written in relation to the first point to detail can you explain it for me to detail in other words, the first part, let read the first part again. Uh, <clears throat> what, uh, one must try to understand that the material elements are the separated inferior energy of the Lord and that the living entity is the Lord's spiritual energy. Right. So now this is the detail. Second part. Whatever we experience, including matter and the spirit soul, the living force is but a combination of two energies of the Lord Vishnu, the inferior energy and the superior energy. And then he says... This is the part that confused you. Yeah. One should seriously study the facts concerning creation, maintenance, and devastation, as well as a permanent place from which one never need return. Yeah, well, it, it's each one of those statements is, is progressively giving more detail about what it means. In other words, you have to understand the difference between matter and spirit, mm-hmm. so you can understand that you're spiritual, and the energy around us in this material world is material, mm-hmm. it's temporary, but we're permanent. And then the whole... I didn't use the mic, sorry. Sorry, everyone. And then the whole material creation is going on on that basis also. And then uh, that the goal is to leave that place, which is temporary, and go to the spiritual world, which is permanent. That's what it's actually saying. In other words, it's important to understand that, in other words, knowledge, sometimes devotees hear that we're no longer, we have to give up jnana or give up knowledge. But it's not that we give up knowledge, but we give up knowledge that's going to lead us away from vijnana, which means realization, and then eventually Krishna's lotus feet in the spiritual world. We want to know more and more about how things work and everything. So we will be able to disassociate ourselves from the workings of the material energy and eventually want to go to the spiritual world. Unless we know where we're going, how are you going to get there? So that those three, you know, paragraphs or three, you know, thoughts are taking us right there to the lotus feet of Krishna and the spiritual world. In order to do that, we have to understand what it is about this material world that is separating us from that eternal existence. We have to know that there is a a spiritual existence, that there is a material existence. We have to know how to recognize it, how to recognize that what we're doing isn't right, it isn't... I mean, it's not that it's false, but it's temporary. And it's not where we belong. It won't satisfy our senses even. But if we go back to the spiritual world, then we'll become satisfied. We'll be, we'll be in our natural habitat. We'll be, we're, we'll be where we belong. We'll be doing what we belong. And if we don't know that, 
then we won't be able to explain it to others and we won't be able to help anybody else do it. And then we'll just be greedy, selfish, sense enjoyers, more or less animals. In other words, this is talking about the evolution of human consciousness to the perfection, to, to join Krishna and dance in ecstasy. And Lord Chaitanya is so munificent and so merciful that he gave us this process, which we were just very graphically, Srila Prabhupada was describing it at the end of this, these purports we just read, that this Krishna consciousness movement is meant to chant Hare Krishna and dance in ecstasy and attract the whole world. And slowly but surely it's happening. We've only been, you know, Prabhupada only came here, what, 50 some years ago? 65, 50, 65. 55 years ago. And now look, it went from, and no, I mean, when I was growing up, I no, I had never heard of Krishna. I had never heard the Hare Krishna mantra. I didn't, I mean, I didn't know anything about these things. I didn't even know about it until I went to college. That's how little, you know, people knew. And now look, in just 54 years, 55 years, Hare Krishna has become, you know, more or less people know about it now as opposed to then. It's growing like wildfire, actually. Sometimes devotees may think, oh, yes, we've distributed all these books, but where are all the devotees? Well, look around, man. You know? I mean, vegetarian, it wasn't even heard of when I was growing up in the 50s. Vegetarian, my mother, who was a nutritionist and was, you know, went through the whole in nine yards and she was a teacher of high school students told me what vegetarian now you're gonna die I said mom give me a break I mean it's just day after Mother's Day I don't want to disrespect my mother I mean we we give her Shraddha every year <laughs> in Govardhan and in Radha Kun, so she's doing okay but just for an example I said mom that more than half the people of the planet don't eat meat and they're doing fine. No, no, you're going to die. I, I learned about it at University of California, Santa Barbara. Not true. Hey, Cameron, what do you think? How you doing? Great. You look great with those those beads around your neck. Thank you. I have no questions. Really? You're just save, soaking it in. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. How old are you? Twenty. Twenty. Pretty right, but you're pretty lucky. Mm -hmm. Took me until so I took me until I was twenty six. We're very glad to see you here mm. and to see you hearing so nicely and liking what you hear. There's nothing that can give you enough more pleasure than that. That's the topmost pleasure. Topmost pleasure. To see someone waking up to Krishna consciousness. That's it. Because that's what Krishna pleases Krishna the most. Doing pretty good. So far, so good. I'm just, I'm just thinking how amazing it is that you have taken this vow and you're fulfilling it in such a way <coughs> that you're inspiring everybody else to increase their faith. Well, their I don't know about everyone else, but some people. <laughs> <laughs> That's very wonderful. Well, I, I had no idea. I just stumbled on The boys were ch out chanting. And I said, oh, devotees chanting. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> and then they told me about this, and now I'm here. Nice to have you. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I'm getting a realization that when you make a vow and then keep it, then Krishna trusts you, mm. you know? And other people trust you. 
I mean, just see what Prabhupada did. He made a vow, came to America, and his spiritual master asked him, asked him to make the world Krishna conscious. And he took that vow, and he did it. So well, we're just little atomic particles of Prabhupada's effulgence, you know. So the least we can do to pay him back for what he's given us is to take a vow and, may, and keep it. I mean, I have to admit to you that one of the reasons why I took this vow was I saw, first of all, I've been very, very attached to Prabhupada's book since I joined. I never stopped reading them every day since I joined, almost 50 years, you know? And I just couldn't understand as I saw over time after Prabhupada left that many devotees stopped reading Prabhupada's books. For various reasons. Maybe some of them after some time realized what they got themselves into <laughs> and decided they didn't want to leave the material world. <laughs> like these are pretty explicit instructions here explaining what the difference between material and spiritual life is and how a material life is actually useless. So that's a heavy pill to swallow. I was talking with Giriraj Maharaj once many years ago when we started to notice this phenomenon. And we decided together that many devotees got into Krishna consciousness not really knowing what they were doing. And then later on they woke up to the fact that actually they weren't really into it. And then they just stopped reading Prabhupada's books. Because if you read Prabhupada's books every day, you're, there's nothing else that can happen to you except you become Krishna conscious. And you want to leave this material world and go back to the spiritual world. What else can happen? Or maybe sometimes people just come to get, you know, sobered up, you know, dried out <laughs> from <laughs> all the strange things that we've been taking into our system and doing in this so-called advanced materialistic civilization. So yeah, you know, Krishna, you know, we there's a lot of talk about how we have to have faith in Krishna and sometimes we may neglect the other side of the bargain of the contract that we have to act in such a way as though Krishna will have faith in us. And the way we do that is to make vows and keep them. Now Prabhupada is so dear to Krishna that whatever he says is going to come true if you do it. So he said, if you follow the four regulator principles strictly after you get initiated <clears throat> and uh, chant 16 rounds a day and try to chant without offense and to learn to do that, read his books faithfully every day, then you're going to go back to Godhead. Period. Because Krishna in the heart when he sees a person doing that, and when he has heard Prabhupada promise that, Krishna arranges it. So yes, I agree. It's the vow, taking the vow and keeping it. This is a heavy vow, to do this every day for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Heavy vow. And just because I'm doing that, things are happening. It's a little thing, a little drop in the ocean of the nectar of devotion. But it's something, it's not nothing. Okay, it's 7.41 and I, my curfew is 7.45, so unless someone else is going to stand up and <coughs> start yelling and screaming and waving their hands and wanting to say something else. Anybody from cyberspace? That was a pretty nice reading, I must admit. Those purports, something else, huh? Isn't it?
Okay. Okay, good. I thought I was hoping there would be something else. Take advantage of the last four minutes here. I was just, uh, you know, reflecting. We're hearing a little bit about the kind of contrast between materialistic civilization and, you know, spiritual life. Mm. I was wondering if you could elaborate more on those points. Elaborate more? Yeah, well, like the, well, the difference between materialistic life Stick and spiritual Stick around, I'm going to read every single verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah, it's going to be explained, you know, I only got four more minutes. But what I can say is that, well, I'll just re be repeating a little bit of what Narada Muni just said to the Hayashvas. But... Um, Material life has a destructive potency. When we act for our own sensual gratification, when that's our desire, then it forces us to do things that are self-destructive. And gradually, as that consciousness spreads, then especially young people who have no idea now, because before it was describing the different scriptures, you know, that have the same kind of basic, remember, in one, that one port, port? It was talking about how Buddhists, they, they ex ask you to go, go to nirvana and leave materialistic life. In the Bible, they ask us to give up material life and take this... You know, those scriptural, spiritual instructions are being lost, actually. Uh, at least in the ed in the educational system of young people, and therefore, it, you can see literally what's happening as the materialistic culture spreads. It's destructive. The earth is being destroyed, polluted and destroyed, and young people are beginning. It's it's a fashion now. You take drugs. You cut yourself. It's called self harm. It's a tre it's a trend. Yeah, it's a trend. You know, one of the the presidential candidates just now went to a small town in West Virginia, where four out of five people in the town are addicted to opiates. Four out of five people, and they're all just bewildered. And they feel abandoned. They feel like everyone's just leaving them behind. And because without spiritual meaning in life, without spiritual knowledge, without happiness that comes from inside the heart, from the soul, from chanting Hare Krishna and hearing Krishna's instructions and what to do and how to do it and <coughs> what the goal and purpose of life is, then it's pur purposeless. Material life is purposeless. It's our solemn duty to assimilate these, this knowledge, apply it ourselves, look out in the world, and see what needs to be done, and then do it. Okay, I just got my marching orders. It's one minute late. Anyway, thank you all. Cameron? If you like what you hear, come and join. Join the party. I'm here all summer. Oh, good. My parents did, so I can... Oh, good. Where are they from? Spring. They're also from Spring, and you're here. Oh, from where? That means you're going to school somewhere else. Oh, from College Station. College Station, but I'm not, no longer going next year. Really? Yeah. It's not worth it. Because you got, you got smart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's things to do. I'm convinced. Count me in. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Shima Bhagavatam ki jai. Narada Muni ki jai. Aryashvas ki jai. Go Premanandi. Anyway, 6.30 tomorrow, same place, same station, same time. Hare Krishna.